Welcome to Lady Wisdom Speaks Academy. My name is Catherine in Proverbs chapter 30. It tells you about how to treat people and tells you about people who do not treat people right and that God is not pleased with that. God wants us to be just. He wants us to be truthful. He wants us to be honest. He wants us to live humbly. He wants us to work in community. Um, he wants us to share what we have. He wants us to be givers and not just takers. He tells us to avoid the fool, the, um, the mocker, the swindler, the cheat, the thief, the gossip, everything that will demote and destroy society. He tells us to avoid them, but to use wisdom. He says for us to be good listeners, to listen intently and then speak he tells us to speak also. Lady Wisdom says speak. Lady Wisdom is speaking truth. And and uh, she wants us to speak truth to power as well. Hallelujah. And decree, decree and declare, thus saith the Lord. So in all of that, we do need the wisdom of God to help us. And we want to move in that. So as I read through Proverbs 30, I'm going to read it in the voice translation. And we're going to be reading about... Um, Another contributor to Proverbs, an oracle of, of wisdom. He's an oracle of wisdom. And so he contributed in Proverbs 30. These are his thoughts about God and his thoughts about wisdom and wisdom's ways. And so he says, I'm going to read it in the voice translation. And the reason why I'm reading it in the voice translation is because um, we... We are in the era of speech. Lady Wisdom speaks. And we have to watch what we say. Our words carry weight and power. So we want to make sure that our words are aligned with God's words and what he is saying and what he wants us to, to decree and declare. So the voice translation was written in 20, 2012. And so it is a recent translation written by um, the Nelson, written by T Thomas Nelson, Inc., or published by them, The Voice Bible, copyright 2012, by Thomas Nelson, Inc. And it's a translation of the Ecclesia Bible Society. Yeah, so these people have studied the Bible, and they're looking at it through the lens of voice. And uh, this era, this time period that we're in, especially in the Hebrew calendar, 5782, which we've just crossed over into this month of September, this month of September, is, a, is very weighty, carries a lot of spiritual significance, that God wants us to speak his words. He wants us to declare. He wants out of our hearts to say, thus saith the Lord. And the way that we don't get this messed up is by speaking the words of God. So we have to say, God, I love your word. God, I love your word. Allow the word of God to be rooted and grounded in our hearts. Let his word uh, be established in us that whatever is in the heart that the mouth will speak. And there's a scripture that says, from the heart the mouth speaks. So when we pay attention to what we're saying and how we're saying it, we know where our heart is and what we need to work on. It's because of the things that come out of our, our mouth. And those things that we say um, without thinking first, that we react to and we say, we've got to pay attention to those, those, those words and retract them if they're negative words, if they're words that are not uplifting, if they're words that are condemning, if they're words that are unkind, or things that we're saying to uh, about ourselves that are negative, you we you got to say no. I don't mean that. I repent. I plead the blood of Jesus on that. You could say that, and then decree and declare what God says about you, what God says about people, what God says about your family, about your situation. So we really have to be careful. And the better, better, the best thing to do is to think first before you speak. And that many times thoughts come into your mind um, and in your thinking, you can uh, capture those negative thoughts and change your mind in those thinkings and decree and declare, say, no, um, those are not my thoughts. My thoughts are godly thoughts. 
and I'm going to have a, a grateful heart. I'm going to say and think things that are whatsoever things that are good, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are beautiful. Yes, think on these things. If it has any virtue, if it has any, any substance to it, if it is of a good report, think on these things. And Philippians tells us that. I'm trying to memorize it, um, that particular verse. I have it actually uh, printed out and put on, in front of me in, in my office so that I can meditate on that, to know what to think on, to think on positive and good things that God has for us. Yeah, so um, this, is, this is, so if you want to follow along with me with Proverbs 30, then I'll go to Google and ask Google to give you the voice translation Proverbs 30 in the voice translation and it will come up the voice and it says this these are the words of Agar son of Jacket an oracle of wisdom he says I am weary God I am weary and spent oh God certainly I am a stupid man as dumb as an ox I don't understand the way that most people do I have never learned wisdom, and I have no knowledge at all of the Holy One. Who has ascended into the heavens and then come back down? Who has collected the winds in the palm of his hand? Who has wrapped up the vast oceans in his coat? Who has plotted the ends of the earth and then fashioned them? What is his name? What is his son's name? Do you know? Indeed, you do. The answer to all these questions, of course, is no one but God. Hallelujah. And we are fortunate to live in this time of the revelation of who God is and his name. And his name is Jesus. He is good. He is God. And he is Jesus. We are fortunate. God has blessed us with living in this time to have all of this knowledge, have all of this understanding of who God is. It's a blessing. The answer to all these questions, of course, is no one but God. Agar, like Job, understands the limits of human strength and knowledge. Unlike many, he freely confesses his need and takes refuge in the one true God. And that is one of the things that um, is denote, denotes wisdom is being humble, living humbly before God, recognizing that our wisdom is limited. We only know so much, but God's wisdom is bountiful. And that when we rest in him and his wisdom, that things open up for us. Our knowledge, our understanding expands because now we are not working from our wisdom, but we are working from God's wisdom. Hallelujah. The wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So every word of God will be put to the test and proven true. He is a defense for those who trust in him. Take care. Add nothing to what he has said. For if you do, he will correct you and expose you as a liar. That is a deep word. Mm, number five. Verse five and six. Yeah, so... We really have to, even with me um, speaking to you and on the prophets of these times, we have to be careful with what we are prophesying, what we are saying, making sure that whatever we're saying lines up with what God says, what Holy Spirit is trying to say. Every word of God will be put to the test and proven true. So we might as well say God's word. What is God saying? Say the Bible. Repeat the Bible interpret it and the thing is is that we have so many different translations if you don't understand one translation go to the next i love the bible app because it offers um different translations you can compare versions it says on it and there you you can look at all of the different versions and then pull out key words so that you have a full understanding of what God is saying to you and what he's saying in a particular verse, especially if that verse has been highlighted as you're reading through Proverbs. Like for right now, I'm reading a Proverbs 30 in the voice translation 
the verse that is really highlighted to me right now while I'm speaking to you is verse number five. It says, every word of God will be put to the test and proven true. And that's not even the full verse. That's even just one phrase, the first line. Every word of God will be put to the test and proven true. That's the first sentence. And that is so powerful. I mean, just from that, God is telling me that every word of God will be put to the test. So God's word will be put to the test and proven true. So when I say God's word, when I, when I, when I declare what God says, when I memorize and speak what God says, when I pray what God says about me, that word is going to be put to the test and it will be proven true because God word, God's word never fails. God's word, this word is illuminated to us right now. And it's saying, trust, God is saying to us, trust his word. Put his word to the test. Believe his word and prove his word. It's going to be proven to be truthful in our lives. If God has given you a word, even one word, hallelujah, hallelujah, you can bank on it. You can believe God's word. God is looking for be belief on the, on the earth. He's looking for faith. He says, will I find faith on the earth? And let him come to your house and find faith in him, in from you, hallelujah, and me. I want God to come to, to where I am, to this house, the house of constant, and I want him to find that the, we are faithful people who believe him. Hallelujah. That this, this house is filled with lovers of God who believe him, believers of God. I am a believer in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when he speaks to me, hallelujah, I say, Lord, increase my capacity and my faith hallelujah, to receive every word that you have for me. And I say yes and amen to it. May it be established. I decree and declare that your words spoken to my heart are established this day, September 30th, 2021, that you, Lord, are God, you are Jesus, that you are King of kings, that you're the Lord of lords, that you are my God, that he is good, that you are good, and that you are God, and that you are Jesus the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. You are Christ my Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And that is a declaration. That is a decree. And it is gonna, it is proven true. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a verse from scripture, and I've been quoting that. I decree and declare that my children are taught of the Lord, and great is the peace of my children. And another word says, my children are disciples of the Lord, and great is their peace. And I, I decree it and declare it that not just my children, but my grandchildren and all the children that should follow in the constant household, that they are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like how Noah had his three sons and his wives, and then they um, learned about God and grew up in that, um, and so that they could then go into the, the, the ark, yeah, into the ark, which is a representation of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the our ark of salvation, hallelujah. So Noah and his family, his wife and his sons and their wives went into the ark of safety. And I decree and declare that the constant family, that my family, my husband and my children and my grandchildren, that we're all going into the ark of safety during these hard times, these tumultuous times. It says, in the days of Noah, that it shall be in the last days, like people are drinking and giving in marriage and, you know, all kinds of things are rampant. Uh, people are just living life according to their own ways, um, not acknowledging God, that there's a falling away, all of these things. So we want to get into the ark of safety, who is Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we want to trust God in his word.
So every word of God is our ark of safety. We'll be put to the test and proven true. Now, just from verse 5, all of that has been illuminated. And so that's what I want for you all, that you will gain this strategy, this, this uh, system. It's a system, my system, that God has given me, and I'm sharing it with you, that is a biblical meditation in which you read the word and you ponder it. You look at it closely. You, you uh, look at especially the verses that are highlighted to you. You ponder it. Then you personalize it. You heard how I personalize this word by talking about the words that, that, that God has spoken to me and that I have been declaring over my family. Yes, and then practicing it. Not just making it a one-time thing, but declaring it uh, you know, spontaneously as I go through my day, when negative thoughts come up about my children and my family, I say, uh, uh no, no, no. It may look like that right now, but that's not true. The truth is that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The truth is that my children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Peace. The, the truth is that my children are disciples of the Lord. And the truth is, is that this is not just my children, but generations to come. Hallelujah, my family. Hallelujah. So that's personalizing it. And then the practicing of it is saying it, you know, and decreeing it and believing it. And you do that through praise. The other P is to praise. Praise God. I praise God for the truth of his word. And it says it's proven true. So I praise God. I have a heart of gratitude and praise to God that he is telling the truth, that I can rest in this truth, hallelujah, knowing that God cares for me, God loves me, and God loves my family, and that me and my household, that we are servants of the Lord, that we will serve the Lord, hallelujah. And then we see in prayer, as I pray, I ask God for more strategy, more understanding on how all of this will unfold for the everyday living. That's where prayer comes in. As we communicate with God, it is in prayer that we get strategy, that we get insight, that God speaks to our spirit. Hallelujah. And our spirit speaks to our mind, our thinking and our thoughts. Hallelujah. That's why we need quiet time. That's why it's important to carve out time, specifically I would say in the morning, when you wake up, when you're fresh, when your mind, give God the best of your day, in the morning when you wake up and you're revived from sleep, give him some of your time. And it, it doesn't, what I think too, is when you're giving in prayer, let your life, your life be a prayer. So as you're, you're getting ready, you're giving God praise and prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord God, that everything is calm in my house. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessing. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord. And then you might pray and say, Lord, I need you to show me what I need to do today. Um, help me with, with this. What should I cook? How should I move through my day? Um, when should I go? Where should I go? You know, so as uh, different things, decisions that you have to make, just consult God first. Like if he's right, he's right there with you, like a best friend, you're just having a conversation with him in prayer, but in a humble way, looking to him, looking to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit for answers and wisdom. Lady wisdom will speak to you, especially as women, our intuition could call that your lady wisdom in your heart. <laughs> your woman's intuition is your lady wisdom. Uh, um, um, empowered by God, the Holy Spirit. Speaking to you, giving you those wise strategies and those wise ways of thinking. Hallelujah. See, now I'm just on Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. <laughs> we didn't get too far. Huh? Let me read the rest of Proverbs 30 here. Every word of God will be put to the test and proven true. He is a defense for those who trust in him. Verse 6 says, take care. Add nothing to what he has said. 
for if you do, he will correct you and expose you as a liar. So we don't want to bring our own interpretation, our own thoughts to this. We want to stay as true to the word and what Holy Spirit has revealed to us. Hallelujah. Because if we try to, our, our motives, that's what that is saying to me. Your motives are so important. Your motives. Why are you saying what you're saying? Don't add to what God has said. Say what God says. Your motives, your motives are so important. Verse 7, two things I ask, O God, sometime before I die, grant these humble requests. Eliminate any hint of worthless and deceitful words from my lips. Now this is an oracle. Or he's an oracle of wisdom. And this is what he is requesting from God. So I think we should take heed to what this wise man is saying. He says, sometime before I die, he says, grant these humble requests. So we may want to grant these requests of God too. And his first is to eliminate any hint of worthless and deceitful words from my lips. And I say, Father, this is my prayer too for um, Catherine Constant and also for my Wisdom Connection family, that you will help us to eliminate any hint of worthless and deceitful words from our lips in Jesus' name. Do not make me poor or rich, but give me each day what I need. Lady Wisdom Speaks gives health to the humble. Lady Wisdom gives help to the humble. The wise are promoted to honor, but fools are promoted to shame. Lady Wisdom asks, are you humble? Dear Lord, help me to be humble so that I can have success in every area of my life. Amen. Hello, hello, hello there. And welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. It's so good to be here with you today. I hope that all is well with you. Well, I have been going into the garden and collecting and harvesting my squash. And what I want to really do is go and harvest my butternut squash. I have been avoiding it, but I need to do it and make sure that I collect them all. Yeah, they are so beautiful and they're so ready because I don't want them to spoil. We've been getting a lot of rain here in the Boston area and um, I don't want any of my harvest rotting. So I need to get out there uh, and gather. Yes, it is time to gather. And if you did not listen to my last video when we did our, our video live, talked, I talked about how to um, make it easier to harvest our vegetables and our different produce for this growing season of 2021. How to just make it easier for ourselves. So I'm going to take some of my own advice going out there and start harvesting uh, the different vegetables, but especially my butternut squash. So come with me as we go out and harvest. I just picked this butternut squash from the garden. It's looking so sweet. <laughs> I'm going to put it in my soup. I love the idea of going from garden to table. I already have on the fire the chicken, the peppers, onions, and tomatoes from the garden that I had picked earlier. And now I'm going to just add the squash just to add some more flavor and freshness to my soup. It's kind of cool outside today. Temperatures are in the 50s. Um, it's warmed up a bit, but not much. And when the sun is shining, of course, it's very pleasant. 
but having this soup is going to just thrill me. I feel so good about just cutting it fresh from the vine. You could see that. Delicious. I can already taste it in my mouth. Mmm, yum yum. Well, this is the day that I'm going to harvest these squash that are here. I've been wanting to do it forever and just been avoiding the whole process. But it is a sunny day today, so I am going to go ahead and just get right in there and harvest these butternut squash start with this one here now it's been holding on and my husband put it on a on a rock so that it would be on the ground so I'm going to just try and see if I can one hand this Here it is, first one. And I just have this cardboard box. Um, I just have this cardboard box because it just seems easier to harvest it and put it in the box. All right, let's get the next one. Now this one is a little more tricky because it is um, entwined in the rose bush so it looks like I should have had my um, gloves on oh not too bad kind of pull it out a little bit um, let's see Not too bad. <laughs> it's right down in here. So this is the second one. Wow. Try not to get from my shadow. So that's two. There's a third one in here. Um that one might be a little bit more tricky to get. So I think it is entrenched. Look at all of this. I don't want to cause a mess, so I'm going to leave that. But there's another one I know. Ow, that I saw down in here. There it is. Ooh. It's dangling. Do you see it there? Yeah. I'm going to have to figure out a way how to get in there for it. But let's see if there are any that are closer by that I can harvest now. Ooh. I didn't realize that they have like these little pricklies on them. Apparently they do. I don't see any right in here. But I know, or I think I saw some by the way, here are my beautiful zinnias that are in here. Oh, yep. There's one right there. Let's see. I'm going to have to get my tool. 
So these are my dinosaur kale that I planted and you can see that the um, cosmos is finished and also the purple perella. Um, the nights have been cool now so that these tender tender perennial or, um, plants are not able to withstand but so far my zinnias are doing very, very well here. the other one that I saw in there. So now we have three. I see another one also that I'm going to get that is in there as well. So now I have four and actually I see another one that I missed right here. You see that one? Yeah, so I have to go and get that one out of there too. I was able to get this one which was tucked under there. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six wonderful squash here and I had collected one from the other side so that's seven for today. I think there are a few more on the other side. So let's go on that side and see what we can get. Spray it. I'm gonna have to collect these squash. Yeah, butternut squash. That's next in the gathering. So I've collected these so far and I'm gonna check over here. I have already harvested uh, two of them that were on this vine here that followed this vine. So I think though that there may be another one. So let's just take a quick look here and see what we get. If I see any. Um, these are still on the vine. I see that corn there. Um, these seem to be still young over here. I don't see anything. But there may be one in there, in that garden. So let's go over there and see what's in that space. This is my beautiful <laughs> herbal tea garden. I was able to harvest seven beautiful butternut squash and it, they are looking so good. I am going to put them away in a cool storage space so that they can 
last through the winter months and we can eat butternut squash. The ones that are more green, I will eat earlier and the darker ones, they will be eaten last. It's a wonderful time for some chicken soup with little dumplings and some butternut squash from the garden. being with me as we uh, went through and gathered our different squash. I am so glad that you joined me here at Catherine's Garden and Home and where we grow, grow, grow together. Catherine's Garden and Home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's Garden and Home. So thank you for being with me in the garden as I gathered my squash, my butternut squash. And I hope that all is going well for you, that you are enjoying this harvest season, that you are making it a joy and not a chore, mm -hmm. that this is just um, satisfying. Yeah. So uh, continue to go out there and do it. Make it happen for yourself and for your family. Well, thank you so much for joining me here. And see you next time right here at Catherine's Garden and Home. Have a great day. Bye. Excited to share with you my day trip with my daughter Karen to the Honey Pot Hill Orchard and it is in Stowe, Massachusetts. We love to go there and pick fresh apples off the tree and it is a beautiful time. The day was perfect and we came back with all of these wonderful treats from the orchard. Come with us as we explore the orchard and pick some delicious apples.
So we are here at the Honey Pot Hill Orchard and we are going to be going apple picking. We made it. Yay. See the apples on the tree? <laughs> Look at how the beautiful apples are just clustered together. Isn't that beautiful? How they're clustered together on the tree. All around here. It's apples galore. Hmm. I do love apple picking. And I do love visiting the apple orchard. You can hear people in the background, but you're just surrounded with all of these fruit. You can be brave and decide to climb up the ladder, but there's no need because the fruit go all the way down and are hanging. The orchard smells like apple cider vinegar from the apples that have fallen to the ground. These are the empire. And there's still more to discover, the Royal Gala and the Cortland. There were also available pumpkins that one could pick up for the season, especially in October now with Halloween and Thanksgiving coming along. Just so many beautiful pumpkins and we know that they can make a beautiful, beautiful decoration for the harvest season. The Green Monster Maze is an activity that is available for one to do 
at the orchard. My trip to the Honey Pot Hill Orchard was filled with a lot of delicious treats, especially the apples. That is why we went. And these apples, which happen to, these apples are the Cortland apples, and they are so delicious. We also picked up this honey. Last time I got a smaller container of honey, and it didn't last very long, but this time I decided to go big. This is raw wildflower honey, straight from the orchards, beehives. And then also we got some apple cider, which was made right on site there at the farm. Karen and I filled up two of these bags filled with apples and all different assortments of apples. We picked the Cortland apple, we picked Honeycrisp, and we also got a few Macintosh and some uh, green apples as well, Granny Smith apples. It was so delicious and so tasty. Academy. My name is Catherine and you know how I feel about joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That is my uh, key verse for my life at this time. And that um, I think the joy is such a, um, it's, it's a third of what the kingdom is all about. Remember how Jesus says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Well, joy is huge. And when we praise God and worship God, then we are building up our joy tank that we can gain strength because joy gives strength and joy also lets the Lord know that you believe him. It builds our faith, gives us courage to go forward. Now in my spirit, the song, and it's like a phrase of a song that's in my spirit. It's, he is good, he is God, and he is Jesus. He is good. He is God. And he is Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. I love you, Jesus, I worship and I adore you, just want to tell you that I love you more than anything, hallelujah, 
more than anything. Start to worship, then we move into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, heaven opens up for us. And when we make requests, let our requests be known in the name of Jesus, then God answers prayer. And so I'm thinking of that, that that can also be a time of prayer, praise and worship and, and um, also making our requests known in the spirit to God. And um, I am encouraging you, my Wisdom Connection family, if you have a prayer language, if you believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you believe in the evidence of speaking in tongues, now is the time to activate your prayer language. Get, you know, and if you don't ask God to give it to you, uh, read up on it, study it, figure it out, go to the Bible. I recommend Acts chapter 2 uh, with the day of Pentecost. Um, I think Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, the book of Acts in the Bible. Read about it. God has given to you. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. He wants us to move in the flow, the way of the Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit is our, our advisor. He's our guide. He's our counselor. And he is also our comforter. He gives us peace and strength and wisdom. You know, from wisdom, Lady Wisdom is really out of the Holy Spirit. She is... Uh, uh, a child of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. She she is uh, the one that um, that Holy Spirit has um, given us, Lady Wisdom in the Bible. If you go to Proverbs, um, and especially in the Message translation, he gives us a clear understanding of who Wisdom is. And even in the Greek, Wisdom is given a woman's name, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Sophia. So wisdom, uh, we as women too, we have a lot of wisdom um, that you, when they call it women's intuition, that's wisdom speaking. A word of encouragement. Anxious hearts are very heavy, but a word of encouragement does wonders. Proverbs 12, 25. Words are powerful. Our words can uplift or destroy a person's confidence. Some people like to make cutter remarks, but the words of the wise soothe and heal. Proverbs 12, 18. Bless others with a positive word. Be kind. Be loving. Be compassionate. A word of encouragement. I love you. Be blessed. I hope that all is going well for you, that you are enjoying this harvest season, that you are making it a joy and not a chore, mm -hmm. that this is just um, satisfying. Yeah. So uh, continue to go out there and do it. Make it happen for yourself and for your family. Well, thank you so much for joining me here and see you next time right here at Catherine's Garden and Home. Have a great day. Bye. If you desire a born again experience and relationship with God, then just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and right now I ask Jesus to come and sit on the throne of my heart and to be Lord of my life. Amen.